These are paradoxes of motion. But Zeno also gives us some metaphysical paradoxes concerning the nature of space, time, and distinctness of objects themselves. Here's how that goes. Simplicius, in his book on Aristotle's physics, describes this paradox as follows. There are always others between the things that are, and again others between those, so the things that are are unlimited. Now that's a bit of a strange argument, and in fact it's not obvious that it's an argument at all, but the idea is this. Suppose that there's more than one thing in the universe, so there are two things. Well, something must separate them, something must, must divide them to let us tell that this is this one and not that one, and so there must be something in between them. Ah, so there are at least three things in the universe, but between the first and second and the second and third, there must be something. After all, that thing that's in between the first two that we started out with, well, it, it's got to be separate from the first and separate from the second, so there must be something between it and the first, something between it and the second. So now we've got at least five things in the universe, and we keep repeating the process. And so it looks like we get infinitely many things in the universe. But that seems absurd. In fact, we don't just get infinitely many things in the universe. We get infinitely many things in between any two things. In between, let's say, my finger and my hand, there must be infinitely many other objects. That seems absurd. And so it looks as if there's something that has really gone wrong. Now, one way to think about this in terms of more modern concepts is to think about it in terms of density. Nick Asher once joked that my house is cat dense. Between any two cats, there's another cat. Now, this is not true. That would imply that I have infinitely many cats, and I don't have infinitely many cats. However, I admit that there was a time when it felt as if I had infinitely many cats. Why? Well, it really did seem as if between any two cats there was another cat, partly because the cats were always in motion. Of course, Zeno would reject that possibility. But still, the picture that you're seeing now is not actually a picture of my house. Nevertheless, I did have that many cats at one point, and if you count carefully, I think there are 30 in that picture. I did once have 30 cats, and so it certainly felt as if between any two cats there was another cat, but not literally true. Similarly, we might say, yeah, Dan's <laughs> house is object dense. Between any two objects, there is another object. It follows that there are infinitely many objects. In fact, infinitely many between any two given objects. But that seems ridiculous. And so, how does Zeno conclude? We must have been wrong in the first place, that there were two objects in the universe. In fact, they can't be distinct. There must be at most one object in the universe. Well, we can think of this as an infinite regress argument, the non-emptiness premise. Suppose there are at least two things in the world, but then backwards seriality. Every pair of distinct objects has something that separates the items in the pair. But the chain of items separating pairs of distinct items can't go back to infinity. There are surely no infinite descending separation chains. We don't have, between any two given objects, infinitely many other objects. So it must be that we were wrong in the first place that there were at least two objects in the universe. Well, what we just did with respect to two objects, we can do even to one object. And that'll bring us to the last of Zeno's paradoxes I want to talk about today. It's one that undermines the existence of even one thing in the universe. We might think, ah, Parmenides is right, there's a unity. Everything is just the Tao. Everything is Brahman. Everything is just this one underlying substance. But not so fast. After all, it seems like it would be a pretty big substance. But we could think about the different sides of the substance and say, um... I guess for it to be a substance that takes up any space at all, there must be some gap between that side and this side. Imagine Zeno here trapped in a box. <laughs> but now we can start thinking, well, how is this possible, right? Here is again how Simplicius puts the point. If it exists, each thing must have some size and thickness, and part of it must be apart from the rest. And the same reasoning holds concerning the part that's in front, for that too will have size, and part of it will be in front. Now it's the same thing to say this once and to keep saying it forever, for no such part of it will be last, nor will there be any one part not related to another. 
Therefore, if there are many things, they must both be small and large, so small as not to have size, but so large as to be unlimited. So we can put this again in the form of an infinite regress argument. Non-emptiness. Suppose there are things in the world that have size and thickness. Backward seriality. Anything with size and thickness has something lying between the sides that keeps the sides separated. But finitude. The chain of things that lie between the sides of a thing cannot go back to infinity. And so the sides of a thing collapse on one another. Hence my picture of Zeno trapped in a box with the sides collapsing, a bit like that famous scene in Star Wars. Now, how is this possible? Well, that's exactly what the argument does. It says, wait a minute, wait a minute. If there's one thing in the universe, it must have two different sides that separate it. After all, it's got size, it's got thickness. But then there must be something that distinguishes this side from the rest of it, the part that is in between. And so, well, Whatever that is, there must be something that separates it from that side, and so we get infinitely many things next to the side of this thing. There must be infinite space between the two sides of the object. But again, Zeno saying that's ridiculous, the sides end up collapsing on one another. So if there's one object in the universe, it must take up nothing more than a single point. It has no size, no extension, whatever. So, Zeno says, it's not just that motion is an illusion, it's not just that the distinction between different things is an illusion. Actually, anything taking up size, anything involving space, anything involving time, anything involving change, all of those are completely illusory. If anything exists, it exists merely at a single point, a point that is dimensionless, without size, without magnitude, without change, without any location in space and time.